friends, uh, welcome to this press briefing on the Prime Minister's visit to Bangladesh uh, starting tomorrow. We have with us uh, Foreign Secretary Dr. S. Jay Shankar, and I have Pratibha Parker, who is Director in the Bangladesh Myanmar Division. Uh, so I'll ask Foreign Secretary to begin the proceedings by giving you a broad overview of the Prime Minister's visit, and then we'll open up to questions. Sir. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm here, as JSXP said, to brief you on uh, Prime Minister's visit to Bangladesh. Now, uh, those of you who attended my briefings earlier uh, would uh, recall I'm generally very careful about using adjectives where I don't need to use them. Uh, but on this case, I would actually describe this as a very historic visit. Uh, and the reason is that uh, the centerpiece of this visit, in a way, is the, uh, the conclusion of our land boundary uh, agreement with Bangladesh. Uh, all of you know it is our longest uh, land boundary. Uh, and the, uh, the, uh, the achievement uh, which, which, uh, with which uh, the Prime Minister would go to Bangladesh and we will have the instruments of ratification exchanged uh, during his visit is really not an ordinary achievement. Uh, with the settlement of the land boundary, and there was earlier a settlement of our maritime boundary, we actually have completely settled our uh, boundary uh, with Bangladesh. And that is uh, uh, for a neighbor, for uh, an extremely important development. And I cannot uh, overstate the confidence and goodwill uh, that is generated uh, by this act. Uh, in fact, uh, for us, uh, there are two concepts at play in this visit. At one level, it is once again an affirmation of our neighborhood first policy, but it is also part of our Act East policy because uh, the consequences, the possibilities of cooperation that would be opened up uh, as, a, as, a con as a result of these developments really has a very profound uh, impact on our Northeast and on our policies further East. Now, uh, what, what I would like to do uh, is uh, briefly uh, talk about the program and then uh, some of the uh, issues uh, in the visit. Uh, the Prime Minister arrives uh, tomorrow morning, uh, late morning in Dhaka. Uh, there will be a ceremonial welcome. Uh, and after that, uh, he would be visiting the National Martyrs Memorial. Uh, he then goes on to the Bangabandhu Memorial Museum uh, and uh, uh, then after lunch, uh, he uh, and the Chief Minister of West Bengal uh, would be, uh, uh, along with the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, uh, would be flagging off uh, uh, the bus services. Uh, there are two important bus services. There is a Calcutta, Dhaka, Agartala bus service, and there is a uh, Dhaka, Gohati, Shillong bus service. So they'll be flagging that off. Uh, then this would be followed uh, by, the, uh, by a, a, a ceremony where there would be an exchange of instruments of ratification uh, of the land boundary agreement and its protocol. Uh, this would then be followed by talks uh, between uh, Prime Minister and uh, the Bangladesh Prime Minister, uh, exchange of agreements. Uh, there are some foundation stones for different projects that we are doing in, in Bangladesh. So, uh, the virtual foundation stones would be there. Uh, and uh, then there'll be a press statement by the two prime ministers. And finally, in the evening, a dinner hosted by uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Uh, the uh, second day of the visit uh, would see a visit by our prime minister to the Sri Sri Dhakeshwari National Temple. Uh, he will then go on to visit the Ramakrishna mission. Uh, he will uh, also go to our new chancery complex in Dhaka. Uh, and then he has a meeting and a lunch uh, with the president of uh, uh, Bangladesh, His Excellency Mohammed Abdul Hamid. Uh, and he then uh, receives a number of uh, uh, important uh, Bangladeshi leaders, political and commercial. Uh, this would include uh, the leader of opposition, uh, Begum uh, Roshan Irshad. Uh, the... Um, former Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Begum Khalid Azia, uh, presidents of leading chambers of commerce and industry, and leaders of the left parties of Bangladesh. Uh, the last 
uh, engagement uh, is an, uh, a meeting which uh, the Prime Minister would be addressing of a very uh, broad cross-section uh, of uh, Bangladeshi society, uh, which he'll be doing in the Bangabandhu uh, International Conference Center. And then late in the evening, he would be returning to Delhi. Uh, so that's the program. Uh, now, uh, in terms uh, of the uh, issues in the visit, uh, as I said, uh, the centerpiece of his visit is the, is the conclusion of the land boundary agreement. Uh, and uh, uh, we see uh, at one level this having an impact across the board on the relationship. So we do think that uh, this visit would consolidate and deepen the relationship. But uh, other than the, the rising confidence levels, I think... Uh, the the point I would make is that uh, it would it would actually uh, help very much with the management of the border uh, that for both uh, countries um, uh, for both countries the uh, uh, we expect uh, improvement of the security situation on the border there will be more trust and confidence uh, we we think that it would be much uh, more effective for us to deal with illegal activities across the border, uh, activities like uh, human trafficking, circulation of counterfeit notes, drug smuggling, movement of people, uh, illegal movement of people. Uh, so, uh, so, so in terms of the uh, the stability and security on the border, we really think that uh, both countries would benefit. In particular, the resolution of the problem of enclaves. Uh, the enclaves have in the past been uh, territory which has been uh, out of bounds for law enforcement agencies and uh, often they've been misused to seek uh, re uh, refuge there by uh, elements who have, uh, not, who have uh, been undermining law and order. Uh, so, so there will be the, the clarity and the, uh, and the uh, sort of, I would say, the uh, discipline which would come from having clearly demarcated borders would certainly uh, help to make the uh, land boundary between the two countries uh, that much more secure for both countries. Now, uh, there is, uh, I would uh, suggest to you, a confidence dividend uh, that the, the fact that we are able to uh, secure the border so much better uh, allows us to do much more across the border. And, and I think uh, a key factor here is uh, connectivity. Uh, we expect during this visit uh, to see uh, ma more initiatives on connectivity, uh, initiatives that would cover, uh, I mentioned the bus services, but the movement of goods uh, uh, across the land border, uh, the uh, coastal shipping, uh, inland waterways. Uh, so in a variety of ways, uh, every aspect of movement of uh, goods and people would in some form uh, actually be addressed. Uh, we would even actually, we hope to have uh, an understanding by which uh, even telecom and internet uh, would be benefited uh, by, by cooperative arrangements between the two countries. Uh, I would also like to say a few words about uh, our development cooperation with Pakistan, uh, with uh, Bangladesh. Uh, many of you are aware that we have a line of credit with Bangladesh. Uh, we, have d we have on the first line of credit about 15 projects. Uh, seven of these projects have been done. Eight of them are uh, under implementation. Uh, the rough volume of our commitments is about $860 million. Uh, and uh, most of this uh, was in the railway sector. Now, uh, during the visit, we would be looking forward to expanding these projects, uh, taking our development cooperation with Bangladesh uh, to many more areas. Uh, so we expect to see uh, projects uh, in the field of rail, of course, in power, uh, in roads, in ports, in health, in education. Uh, so you will get a much more broad-based uh, cooperative uh, landscape. Uh, that certainly would be one of our uh, objectives. Uh, specifically on power, I would like to uh, flag your attention to the fact that, you know, we do provide, uh, we supply uh, to, uh, uh, to Bangladesh uh, 500 megawatts of power. We are uh, expecting to increase this very substantially. 
uh, and we might also supply power uh, uh, not might we will actually supply power from eastern to eastern bangladesh as well uh, so uh, so certainly one of the outcomes of this visit would be to improve the energy situation uh, in bangladesh uh, we had uh, a little while ago concluded an understanding to supply diesel uh, to uh, to bangladesh uh, from uh, West Bengal. Uh, so, uh, I, again, as part of the par partnership between the two countries, you will see uh, a better energy situation uh, in Bangladesh. People-to-people uh, -people, uh, co uh, contacts and uh, uh, movement is, again, an important part of our relationship. Uh, I mentioned the buses. Uh, I think uh, uh, if you would you see the uh, this this bus connection would certainly make it so much easier for people to travel because it cuts uh, what is about a journey of 1650 kilometers to 450 kilometers. Uh, but we we are looking at other aspects of people to people contacts, including uh, more cultural contacts, uh, the possibility of Bangladeshi TV programs being shown in India, uh, and. Uh, the uh, ways of facilitating tourism, uh, enhancing e presence uh, in each other's countries of uh, uh, the, the means to service the movement of people. Uh, and uh, again, reverting back to the economic side, uh, we, ho we expect that uh, uh, the visit would see uh, improvement uh, in the uh, economic cooperation, particularly the investment climate between the two countries. Uh, we have uh, been discussing for some time the possibility of setting up a special economic zone uh, in Bangladesh, uh, which could then anchor Indian investments there. Part of it is that the uh, that Bangladesh has had concerns about the trade balance, and we we would like to see if those concerns in some form can be addressed through more Indian investments in Bangladesh. Uh, our own feedback from the private sector is that today, uh, you know, taking the cues from the uh, dramatically improved political atmosphere, that there's much more enthusiasm uh, in the Indian private sector for doing projects in Bangladesh. So I think quite independently, possibly in parallel, you would hear uh, from them on this subject. Um, and uh, finally, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, for us, uh, Bangladesh is, of course, a neighbor. It's an exceptional neighbor. Uh, but it is, it is a, in many ways uh, uh, a, a symbol of you know, a, democra a, a society where democratic roots have taken hold under very difficult conditions. We support uh, the, the uh, you know, Bangladesh uh, as a democracy. We, we, uh, we note their, their commitment to uh, a pluralistic way of life. Uh, we we applaud them as a very responsible neighbor who's been with whom we have really uh, developed uh, a great relationship of mutual sensitivity. So I think uh, that would be my uh, broad outline. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'd be very happy to answer them. Okay, we now open up the floor for questions. Uh, one question each. Please identify yourself and your organization. The first question goes to Srinjoy Chaudhary. Sir, as far as uh, Bangladesh is concerned, a large number of insurgent outfits are still in Bangladesh or in neighboring Burma. The, in fact, the same insurgents are in both countries. Will there be any effort this time to deal with that issue of insurgents in Bangladesh and, of course, people who go from Bangladesh and India to Burma? In view of this recent attack, it should be perhaps more important. In well, uh, the recent attack was not, I mean, to the best of my understanding, connected in any way with Bangladesh. Uh, but uh, I think this issue uh, uh, has been uh, part of our continuing conversations uh, with Bangladesh. Uh, and again, I, I uh, must repeat what I often tell you at these uh, briefings, which is, uh, I don't predict what is going to happen, uh, but uh, I, I can see it as, a, as an issue that is likely to come up in the conversations. 
अखिलेश सुमन राज्यसभा टीवी सर माय इंटरेस्ट इज विद द इन क्लेव्स वी हैव विजिटेड इन क्लेव्स ऑन द इंडिया बांग्लादेश बॉर्डर सो आफ्टर दिस रेटिफिकेशन इज एक्सचेंज्ड व्हाट एक्टिविटी विल बी वी सीइंग ऑन दोज एरियाज बल व्हाट वुड हैपन आफ्टर रेटिफिकेशन is that uh, there is uh, there will be uh, a certain date which is called an appointed date uh, and then uh, we will be uh, having uh, there will be an understanding of uh, a t- time period when those people who wish to uh, go to the country of uh, uh, origin nationality whatever you call it uh, will will move Uh, so uh, uh, so when we actually uh, do that exchange of the instruments of ratification at that time we will make public what are the modalities to deal with the consequences of the uh, implementation of the land boundary agreement and the protocol but essentially you could have the movement of some people from the enclaves to uh, to india uh, and uh, uh, obviously we need to make uh, preparations for that and we have been discussing that with the government of west bengal uh, who have been very cooperative on this matter oh yes of course iftikhar gilani dna newspaper uh, all these understandings with bangladesh were possible possibly because of the addressed our security concerns bangladesh addressed our security india's security concern is the message for other neighboring countries as well you know uh, i i never like to put relationships on conditional terms particularly with neighbors who've been very uh, positive about us i i'm not sure i would quite share your uh, description of the uh, of the how this relationship has grown you know my my own sense is that we we have a Uh, a partner government in bangladesh which is uh, which has actually has an outlook and uh, uh, has an approach uh, which which makes it possible for two of us to work uh, and uh, they we we've, we've actually discovered an enormous uh, i would say agenda of shared interests uh, today uh, if you if you look at uh, you know areas like power or uh, mo- you know movement of people energy Uh, business uh, you know all all of this uh, has uh, i if you bring a positive uh, bent of mind to a relationship i think you'll find things to do so perhaps others should be more positive yes nilobar roy choudhury parn secretary oh who other than uh, the west bengal chief minister will be accompanying the prime minister to dhaka uh, uh, could you um, who meaning uh, i mean who meaning the the uh, chief ministers of other states involved uh, who are they and what is there also a business kind of a delegation that is going with him no uh, the you know there is the prime minister and the official delegation that uh, regularly accompanies the prime minister and then uh, the chief minister of west bengal and i think there are some officials from the west bengal government uh you know uh, to the best of my understanding not but i i i am not the last word on that subject we we'll, i'll find a way by which we cast can come back to you on that charu uh so uh, i understand the prime minister will apart from his meetings with uh, prime minister sheikh hasina and others in the government also be meeting some members of the opposition mm-hmm. as is usually the case mm-hmm. will he also be among them meeting uh, begum khalid azia yes yes no may i i think you may have come in a little later uh, this is on sunday uh, prime minister would be meeting the leader of the opposition Uh, uh uh and then he would be meeting le- leader of left parties and he would be meeting uh, begum khalid azia as well yeah sir will the issue please of identify, in- please identify yourself i am maha siddiqui from india today sir will the issue of uh, intolerance towards freedom of speech be raised in bangladesh because uh, we are seeing the spillover effects in india because we've had to move out tasleema nasreen to the us 
you know, uh, I am baffled by the connection you are making. Uh, I mean, as uh, uh, all I can say is that uh, our understanding of what is happening in Bangladesh is, uh, I mean, here is a democratic society where uh, there are uh, issues of intolerance and extremism uh, in that society and they have been battling it. Uh, and as one democracy, we, we, uh, we, we sort of uh, uh, note their, their, uh, their achievements and their uh, efforts in that direction. from Bangladesh Prothomalu as well as Kolkata TV. You have mentioned a very important thing very briefly although uh, and that is uh, that Bangladeshi television programs will be uh, shown in India. It's a very very long standing demand on the part of the Bangladesh. If you just elaborate it, how it's possible, will there be an agreement between uh, government of India or Bangladesh or because private television channels are there, so how can it be shown, how, how can they can they access? Okay. You see, what will actually be ha happening is sometime uh, around this time tomorrow, I'll be doing a briefing in Dhaka at the conclusion of the visit, where I'll actually be walking people down the agreements uh, and understandings that we've been reached. So if you are there, uh, you know, I'd be delighted to share that answer if you're not watch the television. But I can at this stage just tell you broadly that it is our intent to, to, you know, we are working on an understanding by which this long-standing Bangladeshi demand that their television programs are shown in India where they believe they have an audience and we agree with them uh, that, we, you know, we are trying to make that happen. Yeah, so um, just bear with me for 24 hours. Yeah, I'm Kalyan Barra from Sam Tribune. Yeah, the, most of the chief ministers of northeastern states bordering Bangladesh have suggested that India should ask uh, Bangladesh access to Chittagong port. So is India going to take it up? Well, uh, you know, uh, we, we have been discussing uh, issues uh, to de deal with connectivity and uh, one of the issues uh, which uh, uh, obviously is on the table is the possibility of how do we use ports more effectively to carry goods. Uh, and uh, there are two aspects to this. One is uh, the, uh, actually the three aspects to this. One of course has been the inland waterway aspect. We, we have an old agreement, an old protocol that we hope to be renewing. Um, number two, we are uh, discussing how we can actually uh, uh, find a way of uh, agreeing on coastal shipping so that uh, you know you are able to get uh, smaller craft to uh, load and unload cargoes in smaller ports and obviously if you are going to load and unload cargo in ports it makes sense that you discuss what happens to the cargo after that uh, so uh, the land movement of cargo so I think these are all right now issues which are being worked upon uh, and uh, Hopefully by tomorrow this time you will see something. Uh, Sabina Amdajit from Infa. <coughs> you just mentioned given that the LBA is going to improve the security situation across the border and the fact that it's going to check illegal migration which both the countries are impacted by. Uh, what about um, uh, the illegal migrants which are already present in India? Given the fact that the Assam Chief Minister has also been writing to the Prime Minister uh, that uh, what he, you know, what can be done about these illegal migrants? Is that issue also going to be taken up? Because I'm basically looking at the present, the migrants already in our country. I, I don't know, you know, first of all, frankly speaking, that's not part of my remit. Because, you know, within the government, another department uh, really addresses that issue. So I'm a little careful getting into uh, matters which I don't have direct uh, oversight of. सर मैं मनीष हूँ इंडिया टीवी से पश्चिम बंगाल की मुख्यमंत्री ममता बनर्जी ने पीएम को एक लेटर लिखकर यह आपत्ति जताई है कि बांग्लादेश ने अत्रेय रिवर पर 2.14 किलोमीटर का एक कंक्रीट वॉल बना दिया है और इनफॉरमेशन नहीं दी है तो क्या माना जाए जैसा कि आप कह रहे हैं कि हिस्टोरिक मोमेंट है लैंड बॉर्डर एग्रीमेंट के परस्पेक्टिव में तो स्टिल पश्चिम बंगाल के चीफ मिनिस्टर किस किस कुछ बातों को लेकर नाराज है नहीं नहीं देखिए मैं नहीं कह रहा कि 
लैंड बाउंड्री अग्रीमेंट के कारण सब प्रॉब्लम्स चले जाती हैं प्रॉब्लम्स तो होंगी अब पड़ोसी हैं तो पड़ोसियों के साथ प्रॉब्लम्स नहीं होंगी तो किसके साथ होंगी तो पर प्रॉब्लम यह है कि हिस्टोरिक मोमेंट है वो खुद जा रही हैं वहाँ आप ही सोचिए कि और उनका भी इसमें काफ़ी कंट्रीब्यूशन रहा है तो ऐसे मौके पे आपको जो है वो माने बिग पिक्चर देखना चाहिए पारुल चंद्रा ड्यूरिंग द मीटिंग ऑफ द जॉइंट कंसल्टेटिव कमीशन बिटवीन इंडिया एंड बांग्लादेश लास्ट ईयर इट हैड बीन अग्रीड Bangladesh had handed over a list uh, of uh, barriers that are being faced by them in terms of trade. Uh -huh. So, what what movement has happened on that to reduce those trade barriers? And uh, are the two sides going to sign a bilateral, renew the bilateral trade agreement during the Prime Minister's visit? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we have been discussing uh, with uh, Bangladesh very seriously. How do we improve their trade access to India? Uh, we are very committed to doing so and there are different ways by which uh, you can do that. As you know in terms of tariff uh, lines, you know, there, there are very, very uh, uh, few tariff lines which are now left which are in any way uh, uh, where, where they face a problem. A lot of it are process problems and I think there are issues for example of standard, you know, of standards uh, there are issues of actually physical movement of goods. There are issues to do. Uh, connectivity itself is a barrier. Uh, there are issues to do with paperwork uh, on on the border. Now, uh, some of a lot of this we we are dealing with bilaterally. Uh, but one point which I did not mention, but where Bangladesh is actually a very key player, uh, is uh, that we have reached. Uh, a motorways agreement uh, as part of a sub-regional grouping, uh, you know, what we call BBIN, uh, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal, uh, which would allow for uh, movement of, uh, uh, of vehicles from one country uh, to the other. Uh, and, uh, you know, that would be very helpful again for the movement of goods and for promotion of trade. Uh, so, there are process uh, impediments. We are, we are very conscious of that. We hope that more standardization, uh, more standardization of, of uh, quality of goods, of standardization of the paperwork, better connectivity, uh, uh, more positive attitudes, uh, uh, perhaps more uh, facilities at the border uh, crossing points. I think all of this can find ways of improving the trade. But, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, we are also prepared to address this through more investments uh, in Bangladesh, which we hope would generate uh, uh, backward trade linkage. Uh, sir, uh, this is Gautam Lahiri. I represent Pratidhi in Bengali Delhi. Uh, we understand that this time perhaps uh, this uh, river water sharing is not on the table, but uh, India Bangladesh shares you know, more than 50 rivers. So, whether these water related issues like river management is on the agenda or on the cards, so whether you will be discussing this issue. Because recently, the Bangladesh High Commission in a press briefing has said they want to reopen the Ganga water agreement because only 10 years left of this agreement. Whether these issues are coming up in this uh, visit? Uh, well, uh, I can imagine that many of these issues would be the subject of conversations. But I think uh, till those conversations happen, I wouldn't like to describe them. Uh, but if I could just make uh, a quick point uh, in regard to the last question, my colleague uh, Pratibha tells me that uh, when we last had a Commerce Secretary level uh, discussion with Bangladesh, uh, we had assured them that we would give them nat national treatment to their goods. Uh, so we are making a very conscious effort to find ways of uh, increasing their exports to India. Hmm? Yeah, we treat them the way we would treat Indian goods. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Jay Shankar, Venkat Narayan, a freelance journalist. There have been suggestions, uh, particularly by Cabinet Minister of India, that the water resources of the entire subcontinent uh, should be jointly managed to sort out the problem of floods and drought and so on. Um, is this an issue? that could possibly figure in our talks in Dhaka tomorrow and the day after? Thanks. In the manner in which you have described it? 
No, I, uh, you know, it is conceivable, uh, as uh, this gentleman pointed out, we, have, we share so many uh, rivers. Uh, and if you see the history of the relationship, obviously uh, river waters is something which, which is bound to be discussed. Uh, but I think from that, that's a very big jump you're making. Foreign Secretary has to go for another meeting, so I'll just take two more questions. Mr. Ranjit Kumar. Yeah, you, sir, you talked about BBI and connectivity. When do you think it will become operational? How long it will take? Oh, I think we are looking at that fairly soon. I, I cannot give you an exact date, but I mean, we are, we are, not, we are looking at uh, uh, months. Uh, I mean, I, we expect, I, I think, to do it uh, at, by, before the end of this year. Last question, Naz Asghar. It's even uh, faster uh, than that. I make it a few weeks. Okay. Hey, Naz Asgharu, you and I say. Uh, recently, Bangladesh High Commissioner had said uh, uh, border killings, uh, killings of civilians on the border create unnecessary acrimony between the two countries. So are there uh, uh, the two governments going to take any steps for border management? Any additional confidence mm -hmm. measures? Well, you know, uh, our expectation is that the, uh, the implementation of the land boundary agreement uh, would create the climate uh, really for better border management. Uh, our, you know, already our forces at the border follow a non-lethal uh, approach uh, in that regard. Uh, but uh, certainly, uh, I mean, the, the uh, expectation is that uh, once there is more clarity, there would be better management. I would like to thank so, the Foreign Secretary thank you. for this briefing and that concludes it. Thank you.